Hello, my name is Bill White and I'm running for re-election as a city councilor at large. The next city council will make important decisions on issues that will determine the future of our city of Somerville for decades to come in areas such as zoning, development, managing the city's increasing debt, and preserving and creating affordable housing so that our city remains the diverse community that it has always been. So your vote is especially important this November. And I would like to take this opportunity to personally ask you for your vote in this upcoming election so that together we can move Somerville forward as we address these important issues. Like many people, my values were set in my youth. I grew up in Somerville a few blocks away from Union Square, near one of the last operating slaughterhouses in Somerville. It was a blue-collar neighborhood where folks knew one another and helped one another out. There was a true sense of community. Because of the help that I received while I was a student at Somerville High School, I was able to go to Harvard College and then Georgetown Law. I served as a law clerk to a federal judge and then went on to practice law. Right now I have my law office in Davis Square and I'm completing my 22nd year as a counselor at large. My experience as a youth in Somerville helped shape the values that I have brought to the City Council during these years of service. These values include the preservation of our residential neighborhoods from development by absentee landlords and speculators that will drive out our residents. Also, the promotion of good commercial development that will help take the burden off our residential taxpayers and renters and bring good jobs and a wide mix of jobs to our city. We also need the creation of affordable housing so that broad segments of our city can find an affordable place to live and the continuation of solid progress in moving our school system forward to becoming one of the best urban districts in the state. Putting policies in place so that people who want to own or rent for the long haul have housing available for them. By taking these steps, we can help maintain that sense of community that is historic to some of them and accommodate the broad interests of all of our diverse residents as our city changes. You know, those might be nice statements, probably most people would agree, but let me describe how I've put those values into action for the benefit of Somerville's people. If you go down to Assembly Row with the beautiful waterfront, mixed-use buildings, and the tea stop, along with the construction of new building that's going on, people are generally impressed. Originally, that area was going to be developed as a big box center, like the one in Everett, with large retail stores and a huge parking lot. I thought that was a horrible idea that would have wasted our waterfront and valuable land. I said, let's fight for a tea stop with good mixed-use development that would bring housing, office space, commercial tax revenue, and jobs to our city. As a result, I introduced legislation that led to the planning for the assembly square that we see today. When I first ran, I said I wanted to help some of those resident property owners with their taxes and create incentives for people who want to live in Somerville as opposed to absentee landlords and speculators. This approach not only helps out the landlords, but also their tenants' rents by keeping landlords' expenses lower. Right now, some of the homeowners receive a 35% residential tax break on their bill. That is the highest in the state. When I was first elected, it was 17%. I got the city to move it to 20%, which was the maximum allowed by law at that time. I then moved to file a home rule petition to get permission from the state legislature to increase it to 30%, which passed. I then worked with the administration to increase it to the 35% that it is today. For this year, this exemption saves a Somerville taxpayer $3,105. We are also all concerned with increasing water and sewer bills. So I introduced legislation at the then Board of Aldermen to also provide a residential exemption for water and sewer rates, which the state legislature recently approved. The City Council Administration will be working on an ordinance to implement it next year. This will further help some of the homeowners and renters by reducing water and sewer bills. I recently introduced a zoning amendment to make sure that the city uses at least 68% of the areas in certain non-residential districts of our city, such as Assembly Square and the Inner Belt, for good commercial development, such as office, biotech. 
This will help guarantee that we'll use our valuable remaining land for high-end commercial development that will bring good-paying jobs to our city and increase our commercial tax base to take the burden off our homeowners and to provide us with the funds to pay for future expenses, such as the new high school. I drafted the city's pay to play ordinance, which is one of the most restrictive campaign finance laws in the country, which limits the ability of those who do business with the city and who develop large projects to contribute funds to elected officials. But I also believe it is important to listen to residents and respond to their individual concerns. I pride myself in returning phone calls and emails and constituent services from potholes to problem properties and everything in between. But my greatest concern is what will happen to our city when the Green Line extension actually opens. Let's think about it. Most of our housing stock consists of two and three family homes. Over the years, the number of those homes owned by resident landlords has been declining. Right now, only about one-third of our three-family homes are owned by residents, and about 50% of our two-family homes are owned by residents. As rents, increase, as rents increase, the amount that absentee landlords and developers will pay to buy a home is much more than any average home buyer could pay. When the Green Line extension opens, thousands and thousands of people will want to live in Somerville to take advantage of the Green Line and community path. We will see a further increase in rents because of the increased demand and with it an even further increase in property values. If we don't do anything, 10 years from now, most of our two and three family homes will be owned by absentee landlords or developers. Rents will be so high that no family will be able to afford to rent in Somerville, nor will any young people just starting out be able to stay. Because of that, I have voted for programs to create affordable housing. It is important for folks to understand the range of people who benefit from affordable housing because our rents have become so high. Let me use a recent example. An affordable three-bedroom unit just came on the market that could cover, say, two parents and two children. Even though it's affordable, the rent is $1,748, and the income limit to qualify would be up to $89,000. You see, because market rates are so high, a couple making $40,000 each with two children qualifies. Let's say for a studio, a single parent with a child, that person could earn up to $47,000 and would pay $917 per month in rent. I would like you all to consider what our city would become without any affordable housing programs. Folks now complain to me that they don't know their neighbors and people come and go. Right now, about 25% of our residents move every year, and probably less than one-third of our residents have lived here for 10 years or longer. Just imagine what it would be like if almost all of our properties were owned by absentee landlords with few families able to afford the rent, or young folks starting out in life unable to stay here and make some of a lair home because of rising rents. We would be left with a cold and sterile community. That is one of the reasons why I also push for the resident exemption to try to create as many resident homeowners as possible because many of them are benevolent and charge less rent than absentee landlords. I believe that both the residential exemption and the creation of affordable housing go hand in hand to keep Somerville a vibrant community as we know it. I bet you'll agree that one of the best ways to predict how someone will perform in the future is to see how they have performed in the past. I believe that my past actions provide a firm guarantee that I have the ability to grasp the important issues that our city faces and understanding of the complex factors involved in those issues to make the sound decisions necessary for our city to prosper. I also believe that my past actions provide a firm guarantee that I have the interest and the ability to listen to our residents and implement solutions that benefit us all. If you agree, I would ask and would be honored if you would give me one of your four votes for Councilor at Large so that together we can move forward for the benefit of the people of the city of Somerville. Thank you very much.